Welcome to Theme Park Map Monday, episode 55. Uh, this one's on a Wednesday, obviously, like we said, we're going to be doing these regularly through the lockdown, uh, relieve everyone's boredom, and uh, give you something to look forward to as well, even though this one's a bit of a look back in the past. This is from the year 20 or 2000, the millennium, the big hope for the future. Um, we'd never imagined here we are 20 years later in a lockdown. Um, but anyway, Bit of joy, uh, 2020 is the year that's supposed to be opening Iron Gwazi. Massive roller coaster, looks so impressive. Uh, obviously, with delays, might be 2021 opening now, we don't know. Hopefully, we're still going to get summer, autumn, and winter for 2020. We're kind of written off the spring, we know that. We're dealing with it. So, we're going over to Bush Gardens, Tampa Bay, Florida. A little bit of a drive from the Orlando Parks, obviously, quite away from Universal. Disney, SeaWorld, uh, all those, but well worth a visit, especially if you like your thrill rides. It's always been kind of known for the thrill rides, the beer and the zoo. Massive zoo there, more sort of safari park animals always seem to have plenty of room. But uh, turning into more and more with the thrill rides, and I say with this year's Iron Grazi, uh, it's got all the thrill seekers heading down there, hopefully. Anyway, here's a park map. Uh, not so keen on the actual map style itself. There's lots and lots and lots of writing. Uh, I prefer pictures and diagrams and stuff that actually explain to that way. I suppose a bit lazy like that. I'd rather see a film than read a book. But that's just my opinion. So, information, alcoholic beverages. It's got all about the drinking ages. Obviously, because it's the Anheuser Busch uh, company and they've got the hospitality house. So, they, they want you to have a beer, but just the one and definitely not drive. So we've got a beer school there as well. It's got all their list of height restrictions, all the different part of the entertainment, guest services. Um, it's got a little bit of a link of, you know, where else to go. There's sort of associations with uh, SeaWorld and Adventure Island, which is their own water park, which is just down there. So if you get a chance, a couple of days over Tampa Bay, three days, four days even again, lovely beaches, nice hotels, um, Adventure Island and Bush Garden, so you can have like a, a holiday within a holiday. Um, over to the other side here, we've got all the different dining and refreshments from all the different areas like Morocco, Nairobi, Crown Colony, Timbuktu, Congo, Stanleyville, and Land of the Dragons, which was pretty new around that time. Uh, some British people will be familiar with Land of the Dragons in Chesington World Adventures. These are completely different, nowhere associated, but similar in their concept or designed for the kids i believe it got changed in bush gardens to uh probably sesame street stuff now but uh you know check that out not 100 percent sure uh got all like say the animals and exhibits and um, everything going on from there going through all the different areas all the different areas of africa and india and everything very authentic very nicely themed and say all around a good park to visit a nice mixture of animals shows and mega rides um, so a real family day out again uh, shows you how long this one is this was back uh, 2000 so the big attraction coming for the following year was the um, Rhino Rally which was going to be their version of um, the safari ride in Animal Kingdom unfortunately it really didn't live up to much it was much smaller not a lot going on not that exciting so uh, yeah, I think anyone who'd been on it would probably agree with me. Um, I don't think there's anybody out there who say, yeah, that was a fantastic investment. But that was the, the big thing that was going. I mean, it looked like it was going to cover a huge area when we actually went on it. It was fairly small and disappointing. But we'll go back and we'll go down to the entrance. Uh, normal entrance, very nicely themed for African sort of theming. And there we had it, the original Gwazi. Now, Gwazi was a, a, like a dueling roller coaster of woody two trains going around at the same time very quick very rough very bumpy uh a good proper old school thrill ride um closed down for a few years until they announced the iron guazi um and if you imagine this plus 100 percent, then that's about what you're going to imagine look it up it looks amazing um definitely head down there if that is going to be busy that's going to be the main attraction but we go through from there to nairobi with the reserves, some great compounds if you like looking at the gorillas and stuff like that, and the elephants and everything going through there, it's well worth a visit. 
you got the little train uh, goes pretty much around the park, uh, taking you around the Africa, the edge of Africa and the Serengeti Plain. More animals, nice trips and all that. Um, obviously, since then, they got the Cheetah uh, roller coaster. I can't remember it. Cheetah Run, I think it's called, um, which has opened relatively recently and it's supposed to be awesome. I haven't had a chance to be there. Haven't got back to it since. So hopefully soon, hopefully this year, next year, we'll see. Uh, then across to Egypt and Montu. I mean, Montu was open to uh, huge acclaim in a great ride. Um, started to put it back on the map when uh, its you know sister parks in Orlando were taken over with huge rides. Universal Islands Adventure came on the scene. So uh, you know, Montu was a fight back definitely. And then we go back over to some nice little bits of the bird gardens. Going through Land of the Dragons, like we were saying earlier, into Stanleyville. This was probably the original thrill part where you had the uh, the tidal wave. Uh, it's one of the first tidal waves we'd been on, and yeah, we were shocked at how wet we got. Stanley Falls, another wet ride, and then going on to the rapids, right, the Congo River rapids there. Three wet rides in a row, and we got soaked on each and every one. Uh, Python there, the original coaster that they had, a little bit like the corkscrew at Alton Towers. I say this is almost like the Alton Towers of Florida. You know, a similar sort of setting, very nice, very big, very well laid out, very countryfied, nicely themed. It's good to do. Uh, then we go on to Kumba. Uh, many of you have probably heard of this. Definitely worth a go. Uh, it's probably an extreme coaster. Um, one of the many here at Bush Gardens. Then back through Timbuktu, we've got the Scorpion. Um, Scorpion, another one of the original thrill rides. Uh, again, very early day Alton Towersy. Um, just, you know, this was the beginnings of the thrill ride city it's become today. Uh, definitely, if you're in Florida, uh, head over there. It's completely, it's a world away from the Disney parks, Universals. It hasn't got the sort of IPs, uh, it's a standalone park. Anyone who's a thrill ride enthusiast will tell you it's worth going to. I'll definitely tell you it's worth going to. So hopefully, let's say this map is 20 years old now. So you've got a lot of differences today. Hope you've enjoyed looking back at that. Hope you're all self-isolating. Hope you're staying safe and well. And hope that you tune in again tomorrow for another episode of um, Theme Park Map Monday, which will be a Thursday. Don't forget, if you're British, Thursday evening's the night that we all go out and we clap for our Frontline people, our National Health Service, our workers out on the front line, brave people, important people, puts everything in perspective. Thanks for watching and we'll see you real soon. Take care. Bye-bye.